Welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, the only show on Indian television where you, the MSME, get sent to stage. This is ET Now special daily initiative to give MSMEs and entrepreneurs the opportunity to be front and centre on every industry and area that matters to you. Tonight, we're talking about leadership. We get asked very often about leadership styles and values for small businesses. So who better to talk about leadership than Randy Slechter? He's a president and CEO of LMI. Thank you so much for speaking with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow on ET Now. Randy, let me start by talking about your association with LMI. Yes, I've been uh, with LMI since 1985, so 32 years now, and it's just been a great association uh, of learning and development for myself. Uh, and I've been able to really help the organization grow. We're now in uh, 85 countries around the world. Uh, our materials are in 26 languages, so we've had incredible growth over that, that time period. Uh, what's leadership for you if you were to describe leadership in two or three words for our viewers what would it be well the best word i've heard for leadership is influence okay. because leadership is all about people and so how you influence other people is the key factor in leadership so you're saying influence mm -hmm. the leaders of tomorrow is a daily show we talk to entrepreneurs and small businesses across industries for the viewers of our show if you were to talk about how a CEO, how the CXO level influences his employees, what would your strategy be? What advice would you have? Well, that's a great question because that gets to the heart of what we do. And the problem is there's different ways of influencing people. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, many managers and leaders are still using old ways of influence, which is through fear and punishment or through incentives and rewards, what are called extrinsic or external ways of motivating and influencing people. For the 21st century, we have to evolve to a better leadership style, a better leadership model. And so what we focus on is influencing people internally, intrinsic motivators, internal motivation. And the key to that is building that relationship, creating that engagement, finding out what the other people want, what they hope to achieve, and then tying that back into the organization's goals. Mm -hmm. And by influencing through that rather than through those uh, external forms of manipulation, you create a much better environment, a much better culture in the organization. Okay. You're saying uh, leadership models are changing in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about how more and more companies are employing millennials. Mm -hmm. The way that you deal with a younger or the way that you work with a younger population is obviously very different from the mm -hmm. way that you work with an older population. Mm -hmm. Your advice for our viewers about what leadership should be in the 21st century? Yeah, I mean, uh, the new generations coming in offer all new challenges uh, for leaders uh, because some of their desires, some of their interests are very different than previous generations. Uh, one of the main things millennials want is the opportunity to grow, learn, develop at whatever job they're in. So they want to see opportunities for that growth. And so leaders obviously must provide that. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to keep that talent. Those millennials are going to go to other organizations that do provide that. And one of the things that we believe very strongly in is for uh, millennials, new generations to develop, you have to create the space that allows them to develop. And to do that, the leaders themselves have to develop further because if they stay stagnant, it creates a ceiling in the entire organization and then nobody can develop. Mm -hmm. So we start by developing leaders, helping them grow, helping them improve, helping them move up uh, the hierarchy, so to speak. And that allows that space for other people to grow in behind them, become successors, take on leadership roles themselves. Okay, so that leads me to a big picture question, mm -hmm. if I may. Can leadership be taught? Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, certainly people have different strengths, different yeah. weaknesses, different personalities, different characteristics. And so some people can achieve uh, leadership at a very top level, you know, president of a country, president of a company, uh, that type of thing. Other people can achieve leadership of a team. You know, they can run a, a small team or, or a group of people. But all people need to learn how to lead themselves how they lead their own lives, how they set goals for themselves, how they create their own value system, their own personal culture, if you will. So let me then uh, talk about how LMI works with small businesses, SMEs and MSMEs to help their leaders develop leadership skills, mm -hmm. given of course that the businesses are so small, so the number of people who are available uh, for leadership training perhaps, the cost which they can set aside for leadership mm -hmm. training perhaps is limited. Yeah, I mean there's certainly many challenges there, um, but the way that we work is we don't go in and run a mass seminar with people. We work with people individually one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. And so we can start as small as a company wants to start. And what we do is we develop leader in a sequence of stages, which is 
how all leaders develop. They go through a process. And so we start with helping them manage themselves, manage their time, manage their priorities. Then we move on to helping them lead themselves, create a good value system, create a strong character, which bases the foundation for trust with other people. We then move into the higher levels of leadership, which are motivational leadership. How do you motivate others? How do you get them to do more? How do you get them more productive? How do you create teamwork? And then finally, strategic leadership. How do you lead the organization? How do you create strategies that are going to win in today's economy? Okay, We meet with uh, and interact with thousands upon thousands of entrepreneurs on Leaders of Tomorrow. And uh, the small businesses in India, at least, are still grappling with very basic issues, whether it's mm -hmm. infrastructure or finance. Your uh, opinion then on whether you think that no matter what the size of the organization, it's important that they set aside uh, you know, time and money for leadership, uh, for leadership training, that they set a structure in place, no matter how small you are. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, all organizations now are becoming talent-based organizations. In other words, the success or failure of organizations is based on the talent. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't develop that talent, you're not going to win in today's economy and tomorrow's economy. Mm -hmm. So you've got to spend time. But the key is how do you spend that time and how do you spend that money? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we focus on in our programs and our process is giving our clients a return on their investment. So it's not an expense anymore. Now it's an investment in terms of, wow, we invest so much, but we get 10 times back in terms of greater productivity, greater sales, greater revenue, greater profits. So if we can create that situation, then it becomes much easier for them to invest the time and money because they're actually getting a huger benefit back. Okay. Uh, is the program that you do for small businesses different from the one that you do for larger businesses? What I'm trying to understand is whether there are any specific needs that entrepreneurs have that you meet through your programs versus their larger peers. Not not specifically. Now, all of our programs are based on universal principles of human behavior, human change, leadership. But then what we do through our services, through our coaching, we customize every program to each person's specific situation. So with entrepreneurs, we'll customize their situation versus a corporate environment. So we're able to take their specific problems, their specific challenges, their specific needs, and really focus on those and then take those universal principles and apply them to those challenges. Okay. Since you have a global view, are Indian mm -hmm. entrepreneurs different when it comes to their global peers? Um, not a lot. I mean, okay. certainly there are some differences, um, mostly because of the market that they operate in. They have mm -hmm. to adjust to that market. Mm -hmm. And so they have some unique challenges, like you mentioned, infrastructure, technology, those types of things that they have to adjust to that maybe in other markets you don't have to or are not as big a concern. But by and large, entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship. You've got to find a market, find a need, find a product, and then create the talent to deliver on those things. Okay. All of last year here in India, and for a larger part of this year as well, there's been a lot of commentary on succession planning, mm -hmm. particularly because of what's been happening at some of India's best known large companies, mm -hmm. big companies. Do you think there's enough understanding of succession planning? In one of your previous answers, you were talking about why it's important for leaders to create the space mm -hmm. to grow younger leaders. Right. Is there enough understanding across the board of succession planning? No, it's a huge challenge in organizations today. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, I talked about this uh, in our presentation. 18% of India companies don't have an ample leadership pipeline. I mean, or only 18% do have an ample pipeline. Mm -hmm. So that means 82% of organizations in India lack the leadership pipeline for succession. Mm -hmm. And so they have to create those succession plans. But the key to that is, how are we developing those people? How are we growing those people? How are we preparing those people to take on additional responsibility? Unfortunately, most companies, most organizations, most leaders are so focused on today's problems, today's challenges, putting out the fires, that they don't have time to really focus on tomorrow and building those succession plans. How do you think that can be fixed? Well, one of the things that we do is we make our programs very convenient for people to go through. Rather than taking them away for three days or four days or something like that where they, they can't afford to be away, we work with them in very small snippets of time. We work with them either once a week or once every other week for just a couple of hours. And then we develop slowly over a period of time. That way we're not taking them away from their business, not mm -hmm. taking them away from their, their livelihood, but we're providing that opportunity to continue to grow over time. Okay. I also want to talk about crisis management. Mm -hmm. How crucial is that as a skill set for a leader to have? Yeah, it really is, but um, most people exaggerate the crisis or actually make the crisis bigger by the way they respond to it. Uh, most crisis is actually just a problem or an obstacle to the goal you're trying to accomplish. And if you see that as that, rather than, oh wow, this is an, an, a crisis we may not get out of. No, it's just a problem. How do we address it? And the first key to all crisis management 
is identify the problem. Clearly, specifically define what is the real problem here because too often they don't have the real problem in mind. They're just thinking that there's a problem and that's not the real problem. So you define the problem and then through teamwork and building up your people, you engage them in how are we going to solve this problem? How are we going to get around this problem? How are we going to go over this problem? And ultimately, a lot of times, these problems, these crises, turn into opportunities to grow the team, grow the business, expand into new markets. But I need to hold that thought out. We'll take a very quick break, but much more on the other side. Just stay tuned. Welcome back here with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. And tonight on The Crux, I'm in conversation with Randy Slechter. He's the president and CEO of LMI to talk about leadership skills and values for small businesses. Okay. Uh, you were talking about hiring the right team mm -hmm. uh, and uh, having the right team. And I want to talk about hiring the right team. Mm -hmm. How do small businesses and small business leaders identify people who they think will have the right skill sets to be able to lead teams going forward? Yeah, and that's a whole industry in and of itself mm -hmm. is, is people selection. And we do uh, do some things in those areas, but what we're focused on is we want to identify the right people in terms of their character, in terms of their attitude, in terms of their mindset. Skill development is a fairly easy process, but having them have the right motivation, the right attitude, the right beliefs to help us build this business, that's, that's more key because that's a little harder to develop. And so one of the things that we really advise people on is get to people and make sure they understand what your vision is, what your mission is, what your purpose is in the business. Do those people buy into that? Is that something they want to be a part of? Because that's not something you can go train them to be. You've got to find the people that are passionate about what you do. And then you can train them with the skills that they need to succeed. Okay. You were saying right attitude, uh, and I want to circle mm -hmm. back to that. Mm -hmm. uh, two questions. First up, how do you define culture at an organization? Um, well, you know, one of the keys about attitude is, and most people don't understand this, mm -hmm. is cultures is just really a collection of people's attitudes, their mindsets, their behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so to change culture, you have to change the way they think. You have to change what they, their, their mindsets are. And that's really a process of change because uh, an attitude is simply a habit of thought. You think a certain way and it becomes a habit. So to change it, it's just like changing any other habit. You have to replace it with a new habit. Okay. So I was also thinking more in, la uh, in terms of the cultural ethos that the founder of a company mm -hmm. wants to have for his or her organization. Right. How is that something that you ensure permeates down to the bottom of the pyramid, if I can call mm -hmm. it that? How is it something that can be made inclusive mm -hmm. and something which is bottom up and not just something that the CXO level is imposing on its employees? Yeah. I mean, one of the keys there is to involve people in developing the culture that you want to have. In other words, uh, have, have meetings with your group, have uh, interactions with your group, finding out what they believe our culture should be. What do you think we should stand for? What do you think we, uh, what type of culture we want to have around here? And then identify the specific behaviors that support that. What are the actions we want to take that say this is our culture, this is who we are, this is our identity, and then make sure your top leaders are being examples and role models of those behaviors, of that culture. And through that way, you can spread it throughout the entire organization. All right. Uh, let's also talk about uh, what the roadmap is looking like for India, for LMI. What's the growth story here? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the plans? Anything that you can share with our viewers? Certainly, yeah. We've been in India over 20 years now, and we have uh, thousands of, of people that have already gone through our program, but it's still just scratching the surface of the potential mm -hmm. here. We actually see India as our number one growth market going forward. Um, and this is because they have the largest workforce. They have the largest number of people, so they're going to need the most leaders going forward. So consequently, the need for leadership development here is huge. Currently, we're in 17 cities here in India, and we're looking to really double that over the next five to 10 years. We want to get into 30 cities here in India and really expand our presence. Uh, we want to be the number one provider of leadership development here in India. Okay. I want to talk about your use of technology, both mm -hmm. front end, which is digital and social media, as well mm -hmm. as the back end. And let's start with the back end. Mm -hmm. How do you use technology 
at LMI for your programs? Yes, well, we're actually expanding that uh, tremendously here in the next year. Um, most of our programs uh, and tools right now are currently in physical form. We use a lot of uh, printed materials. We use a lot of audio materials. Um, now we're moving that into a digital format. Um, we've been researching to make sure we don't lose any of the learning effectiveness because unfortunately many online programs people don't finish, people don't complete because they're not interactive enough, they're not engaging enough. So we've wanted to make sure we do it right and do it in the right way. So we're now encompassing technology where people can access our information through an online format. Um, and then we tie that with coaching services that our people provide because it's not just the information it's the application of that information that's so critical and so we provide coaches and, and facilitators to help them actually put that information into their uh, job into their workplace okay the front end of it which is using digital as well as social media social mm -hmm. media is becoming a very crucial tool particularly for small businesses mm -hmm. whether it comes to talking about their brand or whether it comes uh, you know mm -hmm. to using it as a marketing tool mm -hmm. Talk to our viewers about your own views on digital for leaders, particularly in small businesses. Yeah, I mean, it's becoming a huge uh, area of growth for all businesses. And we're going to continue to expand that for ourselves uh, personally. But uh, what we find is when you're in the services business, it's more word of mouth by social media uh, that we're able to generate more and more business. Because our, our results are so effective, it then gets out on social media, hey, I took this course and it was fantastic. And you know, so that's what we're looking to do is not do it from a top-down approach, but do it from a grassroots, from our clients, actually extolling the, the value of our process. Okay, any common mistakes that you see leaders making when it comes to using social media? Um, yes, lots of... What are of, the top two or three, if I can ask Lots you of mistakes. Well, um, one of the things is you never want to get into an argument on social media. Um, you know, it's a, social media is a great place for recognition, for praise, for positive comments. Um, but when you start arguing with people, when you get into war with words with people, it's just, it creates, because you're never going to solve the problem on social media. The problem's not going to be solved until you get face to face and really understand each other, really understand each other's situation. So um, use it as a positive communication tool, but not as a negative communication tool. All right. What's uh, next for you? I was asking about what's next for LMI, but personally for you, uh, what's next? I do understand that you've authored several books, mm -hmm. um, and then you've uh, you know become a part of the LMI program. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Actually, I'm working on a new book. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, it'll be out in the next year or two, mm -hmm. and it really talks about our total leader concept and how we the process we take leaders through to become a total leader. Uh, because leadership development isn't just a, a one-stop shop or a one event process. You actually have to take them through a series of development stages to really become truly effective as a leader. Okay, how much of what is happening in the external environment influences leaders? Uh, and, and the reason that I'm asking you this is, I previously asked you about how Indian entrepreneurs are different from the global peers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much happening. The world is more connected now than mm -hmm. it was ever before. How much of what is happening globally should Indian leaders look at? Uh, for instance, uh, I do remember a comment that Steve Jobs had made where he said, you know, meetings are a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, and he prefers face-to-face -face mm -hmm. interactions, which is also mm -hmm. something that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Should Indian leaders try and emulate what is happening uh, globally? Does that work? Do these models work in India? Yes. I mean, um, obviously, when you see all these changes and turbulence and, and challenges happening externally, you need to be aware of them because obviously they can impact your business. But I personally believe we focus too much on those things. Okay. And, and part of that, it, you know, the media obviously is going to report on all the changes and challenges and turbulence happening. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's front and center. And so it's very easy to spend your time focusing on that. Whereas what I've found, the more you focus on yourself, the more you focus on your own business, the more you focus on what we're doing and how can we improve, how can we continue to to grow, the more successful you're going to be. When you start looking at challenges, you take your eyes off the goal. So now your focus is on the challenge rather than the goal, and then that takes you down the wrong path invariably. Okay. How much of the regulatory environment in terms of government regulation mm -hmm. uh, does a, le a leader need to be aware of and work in sync with. In work in sync with is a no-brainer, but mm -hmm. be aware of and be able to handle yeah, it. Yeah, certainly they need to be aware of all the regulations that are concerning yeah. them, but they want to compartmentalize that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. In other words, have staff in charge of making sure we're in compliance, making sure we're following all the regulations, making sure we're following all the laws. Absolutely, that's very, very important. But we don't want that to distract from what we're trying to do. So if we can compartmentalize that and, okay, these people are responsible for that, now we're going to focus on our main mission, we're going to focus on our main purpose. It it, it doesn't take away then from the success of the organization. 
All right. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, training leadership mm -hmm. programs that take place across the world. India as well, like mm -hmm. you said, Indian entrepreneurs are opening up to the idea of leadership training mm -hmm. programs. What is LMI's USP? What would you like to tell our viewers? Yeah, great question. Uh, the real difference between what we do and most of, uh, people in our industry do is most of our competitors are what I call information companies, content companies. Mm -hmm. They have great information. They have great ideas, great concept, great theories, great presentations, great seminars. Unfortunately, that doesn't change people, that doesn't change organizations. It's great entertainment, it gives them great information, great ideas, but I, I, I like to use golf as an example. It's like going to a seminar about golf. You may get all excited about golf, but that doesn't make you a professional golfer. Mm -hmm. It's the application of all that information, the practice and application that really turns you into an effective leader. And so what we do differently is we actually have a process that takes those ideas and turns them into actionable ideas, actionable little bits of information that, okay, we can do this today, we can do this tomorrow, we can do this the next day. And consequently, they're learning through experience, they're learning through application, which creates much longer term retention, much longer term change than just going to a seminar or reading a book about these ideas. Randy, thank you so much for speaking with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have any questions about leadership styles at your own organizations or you have any feedback or any questions, you can always reach us. Our email ID where you can write in is leadersoftomorrowtimesgroup.com. Tweet at me at sunanda underscore j. That's my personal Twitter handle or lot underscore et now is our official Twitter handle. You can also leave your comments and feedback on our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow on et now or that number that you see on your screen is how you can reach us directly. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.